Timbers versus Shinji, and they would tie 17 games in a row. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Bars, give us a little bit of an introduction into these two players as we move on to this is winner semis, I believe. Yeah, and now um, back in our current day, we have a uh, Pokey Lamb with the villager, and Pokey Lamb is a uh, is, is is pretty familiar to a lot of people. Tri-State villager, right? And we have Joshathan, who I believe is from PA, right? For, uh, is, is the PA Rob? Yeah. So um yeah, so Josh then actually has been uh, doing pretty well as of recently at these uh these, you know weeklies and Pokelam usually Pokelam enters does pretty well, so this is definitely a Pokelam has has he's, the, he's won a few Xenos right? The, uh, the Xeno Wi-Fi I, has he? I believe so, right? Okay, well at the very least he's made it really far tonight and he's yeah. starting off this game pretty good Although honestly, this is super even from what we've seen and another part to it is there's a lot of offstage gameplay going on And granted that's something that's kind of expected with these two characters uh, Interesting up smash neat um, but uh these uh both these characters have extremely versatile offstage game rob with his uh his whole fuel his up b is able to be extremely flexible and villager just goes all over the place oh with the frame trap he actually manages to get that grab close out the stock and now pokalem has a very solid lead here yeah and um thing about think about this matchup is uh usually people usually uh think of it as rob's favor but the thing about it is Villager definitely does have the options, definitely does have the uh, uh, the range game to compete with Rob's in the pocket is definitely a factor that plays yeah. pretty well in this matchup. And Pokalem is also a very momentum-based player. So him playing with the lead is going to be pretty hard for Josh to, to handle. Yeah. Oh. And, all right. Oh, is that going to do it? Oh, he reflected the pocket Yo, in beam. That was so good. Man. I'm not sure if he was intending to actually... Oh, oh what's happening? Yes, oh, no, yes, get yes, out of yes, there, bud. yes. Yes, both of those things, stock where I intend them to work as they are. And yo, the traps. The that traps? Was, that was so good. There was even the hit lag as he was, like, coming into contact with the tree. That was just um, that amazing setup on Pokalam's part. And as far as this game is starting to go, Josh then has so much ground he needs Ooh. to make up. And Pokalam is not giving him the chance to even start on that journey. Yeah, and he was getting tech chased with that Nair, that really fast Nair. Um, Rob being a big body, him tech rolling in any direction is going to take you 10 years. So, Pokalem reacting even on Wi-Fi uh, accordingly. And now he's pushing he's pushing Josh then all the way to the corner and could potentially take the stop. Yeah, and I really just want to sort of highlight the pressure game that Pokalam is exhibiting at the moment. Yo, Nairs. <laughs> well, yeah, like six nads, but also the way he's like using his bowling ball, just attacking from multiple angles at the same time makes it incredibly, you know, normally villager, at least, you know, the platonic ideal of villager, I guess, is more of a passive play. That Yeah. Oh, so did he reflect the tree and then get killed by the axe? <laughs> I'm genuinely a little bit uh, shook by that interaction. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Yeah, uh, I mean, pretty much what happened was that he did his side B, um, clinked with the tree. He clanked with the tree, right? Reflected, reflected it, yeah. the tree. Reflected. I'm seeing yeah, an actual reflect reflection there. Yeah, he, he reflected the tree, right? And then he tried to do something else and wasn't hit lag and wasn't in lag. And I don't even think he got, I don't think he expected to get hit by the axe in that situation. Yeah. Also, great, the fact that he was holding the gyro meant that he didn't have access to any of his smash attacks. So that was really good mm -hmm. awareness on Pokemon's part, going for the special move with that axe so that he didn't, like, you know, just knowing the option in that situation that would kill. All right, now we're moving into game two. This is best two out of three, so if Joshathan can't sort three, of... Three out of five. Oh, three out of five, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Oh, I guess because nobody has to go home. Yeah, we're already <laughs> home. We're already <laughs> home. We're already there. Um, um, yeah, so, uh, all right, so yeah. he has a little bit more room to adapt, to adjust, but... <laughs> oh my god, the B reverse gyro, and right now, uh, Pokemon has a pretty good read on what Joshton's trying to do. Um, this is probably the third or fourth time I've seen Pokemon get a very hard read on Joshton's, uh, tech roll. Um, so let's see if maybe Joshton could mix it up a little bit, maybe delay tech roll, and that was, that was a pretty sneaky side thing, pretty sneaky. 
Wait, did he SDI out of that? Because that was... He managed to not get hit by the last hit. Yeah. Oh! And yeah, it was, that was pretty much a proximity thing, but that, that was, uh... A little nasty. Yeah, you just saw the amount... Like, he was putting out constant hitboxes there. Is this upper going to do it? He manages to sneak in that no, kill, and no, this is pretty man, even man. as a result. Yeah, my man did not get that DI. That DI, yeah. that DI is not the easiest to hit, because you, know, you have to SDI in one direction and DI in the other direction, and sometimes yeah. it's a little random, because you don't know which direction you're getting hit in, so... Yeah, I believe that it's your SDI, SDI to... It doesn't matter which direction you start the SDI, but eventually when you have to go for a survival DI, it has to be in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well. All right, and finally, this is the first time I think we've really seen Joshathan with a lead. Granted, it's only 30%, um, but when you are managing to actually force the opponent to approach because you have the lead, that's the sort of thing that can snowball. Yeah, and Rob is definitely a character. Um, even if you were trying to counter camp Rob, um, he does have enough options, especially in his projectile disposal, to make you not try to employ that and when once you're at the edge it's pretty destructive and as you see there uh rob getting that confirmed with the gyro into f smash yeah and one thing that we've been seeing so far in this game never mind i was about to say that the the percentages that these stocks are being taken is that you know Joshathan has been getting some very early stocks most of them below 100 whereas it when pokalam has been getting his kills they're a little bit more grinding and out but as we see right there oh great reset getting a ton of damage and oh the jungle doesn't quite continue manages to turn that bad situation around but now Joshathan, let's see if he can actually maintain control here yeah because he, he did he did have a pretty okay lead and now it's pretty much an even game, but let's see if he can convert off this offstage interaction. <laughs> no, he pockets the gyro, throws it up, and now he's off stage. Surprised the gyro didn't get reflected. I guess if the timing of it didn't work out, that should be it. Another bowling ball to the face. Oh, Pokemon no. up two. Oh, that game definitely closer than the last one. But yeah. uh <laughs> close doesn't quite cut it. We he needs to actually get a game on the board if he wants to stay in the winner's bracket. Yeah, and something that Josh then keeps getting caught with is uh, Pokalam is doing a lot of these aerials and a lot of these side Bs in the air and stalling tactics and then immediately doing Nair, right? It's almost like he's baiting Josh then into approaching just so he could throw out that Nair because that Nair, I'm pretty sure, what is that, frame three, I believe? I might be wrong, right? Uh, yeah, frame, villages frame three, frame three. Nair is frame three, yes. I, yeah, yeah, frame I three, right? So, so he, he can immediately do that out of most of his aerials, and it seems like Josh then is pressing forward too much. I'm getting caught with that very left moment. Maybe we need to see a little bit more a defensive place outcome out of Josh then coming into the game three. Yeah, oh, the thing is that he can't actually take a very defensive approach if he doesn't have the lead, and right now it seems that Oh, Pokalim is not giving him the chance to have any sort of advantage. He's trapped above. Min just to find his way back down with a Nair. But as things stand right now, this is looking even worse than I think the, this is the strongest start that Pokalim has had so far. Yeah, and, you know, and it's all about controlling the pace, and which is what I was trying to, you know, trying to get at. And it's, he hasn't been able to control the pace pretty much this whole set. And now maybe he could change that <laughs> and I'd be, somebody has to make, you have to make things happen sometimes. You, you can to, control the pace when it's basically a two second sprint to the blast zone. Right there, that, what a turnaround. Joshathan now with a commanding lead here, especially because as long as he's able to avoid, oh! Never mind! What a snipe! Yikes. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um wasn't much he could do in that situation, not I just don't think he expected to get that link to throw into that angle. Um, but now we pretty, pretty much have even the game, and this is what I'm talking about. Jonathan has not been able to get any type of momentum, even when he does have an early lead. Even even an early size lead, that was pretty sizable, but that hit with that laser off stage. Um, and one thing worth noting, uh, Joshathan has been trying to approach with this Nair quite a bit, and it seems that Pokalam is able to address it almost every time. He either positions the gyro such that, okay, finally, wow, okay. DI. I'm telling you, okay, I, I'm telling you, I know it's not the easy DI, but like, both of them. I don't think DI would have, have saved him there. That was, oh, he was at no, high no. percent in the top of the last zone, yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, either way, stock is taken. Joshathan still has a lead. Let's see if he gets him. Oh, fantastic up air out of shield, realizing the only option that would be able to make contact there. 
Oh, oh that's no. super deep forward air. He might be low on uh, fuel. Normally, that's not something that we see Rob super struggle with, but the fact that Pokalam is so able to... He's just able to keep him off stage over and over again. I think by now, he's feeling pretty comfortable about that. Yeah, and funny enough, I feel like that last dash attack off stage kind of saved Josh down a little bit, because I think he's running low on fuel, trying to hemorrhage it a little bit and uh, pop him up. But with that being said, Pokalam taking that stock, 76%. This isn't that big of a lead considering the type of uh, offense Pokemon's been able to generate. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I do just want to address how that stock just started. Josh then came down and immediately just stood there, charged Gyro, jumped and said, come to me. Pokalam did and he managed to get a grab off of it. So I think he understands oh, okay. he's in the position oh, of power right now. Yo, he would have been, he would have been so sad. If if that if that set would if that game would have ended and that set would have ended with him missing that whiffing that up smash and then Pokelam doing some magical comeback, oh man. Oh man, that 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 would have been bad. But, but he doesn't have to worry about that timeline. Such a beautiful back air. Like he's been trading with those uh gyros a lot, and normally he just comes out behind. But that time he traded with a the back air is a really strong move. So, if maybe he could try going for that more, you know, knowing that these gyros are gonna be, you know, the part of the wall that Pokalam is aiming to set up. So if you throw out bigger moves and you're trading, you know, back and forth, I mean, I'm pretty sure back air does more damage than uh, gyro as well as most likely will give him better stage positioning. Granted, it's not, he can't just spam back air in neutral. Like that is not a viable way to <laughs> win with Rob, but nonetheless, I'd be interested to see him try and go for it a little bit more. Yeah, and uh, it just seems like he also picked his spots a little bit better. Um, you know, not for, not not for putting himself in situations or pushing the envelope too much where it wouldn't be advantageous for him. Like you know, he sat back a little bit. Um, see, right now he's resetting his resetting his gyro. Right, it seems like gyros can be pretty instrumental in him trying to apply pressure on Pokemon. <laughs> okay, that forward air managing to break him out of what would probably be in a brutal combo. Uh, Joshathan. You know, he managed to win that last game, but still, all Pokalam needs is one more game, and he manages to win the set. So, but okay, maybe, maybe Joshathan has adapted, because at this point, he's looking pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can tell right now, even that down tilt back air, right? He was trying to read that jump out of shield, and even though uh, Pokalam didn't get it to him, you can tell that Joshathan is really thinking right now on how to take the, how to pick his spots and take the stock a little bit earlier. Oh, with that being said, he just got up smashed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know how people managed to react like that on Wi-Fi or whether Pokemon just anticipated six degrees, you know, ahead. Oh! Yeah. That was... That was something. You spin me right around, baby. Yeah, yeah, Roto Arm using it as I for intended it to be used. Um... Oh, oh that is mm. devastating. Uh, where's my shot glass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, are we gonna are we gonna say that's a bit of a Wi-Fi thing that just happened uh, right there? Look, you know, um, we're gonna say that uh, Pokemon is now in the lead and has so much momentum. <laughs> uh, oh, Jonathan yeah. is matching his way back to the ground with new trailer and is not working because at every turn Pokemon is just hand airing him. Almost every single move in his arsenal. Oh, that was actually a fantastic read right there. Ooh, and let's man. not forget, this is Rob with one or two solid reads with the right positioning. He can close out a stock right now, and then if he goes ham, oh, yeah, that back um, yeah, him. yeah. Rob can't take a stock with ease. Um, I would say just for him, I feel like he would, to be comfortable. You should probably take the stock like about now. Oh, oh. well, he certainly oh. did. Oh, he took it about now. So. uh... Anything on the table. Oh, that back air almost doing it, but he is surviving. Rob, a super duper heavy character. I, I like the fact that if you notice Pokelam, he threw out those two uh, bowling balls and then, all right, there he goes. He finishes, okay. manage, doesn't play with his food or anything, closes out the game. But Pokelam, he went for like two forward smashes and I think he was really trying to bait him to go for that Roto Arm again. Mm -hmm. uh, because he pulled back right as he was getting in range. Yeah, look at that. If he was trying to go for the Roto Arm, that would have definitely been a been a stock in Pokelem's favor and great awareness for Jonathan that that's a gimmick he probably can't be using too often yeah and even even the last interaction I'm not sure if Jonathan really wanted to go for that up air 
or maybe that's supposed to be an up tilt, right? Because in that situation where he was trying to sharp um, Pokelam, it seemed like an up tilt would have been an optimal decision, but who knows? But either way, Pokelam takes that game uh, four, and he moves on to Werner's finals and um, waiting for his next opponent. So, I mean, good stuff to Pokelam. Yeah, I think that was that the Rotor Worm that killed on that last thing. It reflected the Gyro, but I don't think the Gyro was what actually took the stock. Um, man, I will say, oh, that's so sad. That is beautiful. Um, man, seeing two characters who are both projectile heavy and have an extremely versatile and powerful, uh, yeah, look at that reflector. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the bowling ball killed him. In that situation, yeah, that bowling ball is just. It's so strong, which means if you reflect it, it's too strong. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, if uh, if he would have reflected that bowling ball while Pokelam was on that Kalos platform, I guarantee you, he probably would have killed him. 